Come on, let's worship the Lord right now. Come on, everyone in the house. Lift your hands to Jesus. Come on, we got to push. We got to push. There's a miracle in this house tonight. He didn't know what I was going to preach tonight. Hold on for one second. Listen. If you want a miracle, you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone. I don't care who you are. If you're a visitor or you belong to this church, we get to this point. We worship a little bit. We pray a little bit. But it's going to have to go beyond that. Come on. This is six weeks we've been in revival. God's not done yet. He's not going to be done. There's people in here that you've been here. I've seen you. You have not moved out of your pew the whole revival. God's been dealing with you and pulling on you and talking to you, but you have not, not made a move towards God. Come on now. I'm only going to be up here a few minutes tonight. We're supposed to go into a deeper place with God. Pastor B didn't know what I was preaching tonight. There is a miracle in this house. I don't care if you believe me or not. Somebody's going to grab a hold of what I'm about to tell you. Amen. If you want to stay there, you can. I'm not going to be here long. Musicians, you can stay here. That's right. You're not, if you want to stay here, stay here. We're not going to, we're not going to be up here long. Jesus told them, say unto the mountain, be you removed and cast into the sea. He just wasn't speaking, but actually King Herod had cut the top of a mountain off and moved it to another mountain to build his palace on, Herod the Great. That his palace, his security would be the highest point in the region. That he could see the enemy coming from miles away. And they believe that when Jesus said, stand to this mountain, that somebody actually done it. Y'all right. right. not getting that, are you? Come on. Come on. You're not getting what I'm saying. Somebody's already moved the mountain. Yes. I said somebody's already moved the mountain. You want your mountain to move tonight, you got to speak into it. I said, if you want your mountain to move, we wait for the preacher to speak. You need to speak to your mountain tonight. I said, you got to speak unto your mountain. We come up here and we just gaze. You got to open your mouth up and speak. Say, infirmity, get out of my body in the name of Jesus. Stronghold, be broken in the name of Jesus. You know, there, there are to ever pew, if you're physically able, ever pew are to be empty tonight. That you just believe God, if I step out, God, you're going to move my mountain. I say, God wants to move your mountain, but he wants you to do something first. He, he's done entered into this room. 
I said he done entered into this room. There's a song that says, when he walked into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. Then it says, when you walk into the room, sickness starts to vanish. Your God may be dead, but my God is alive. Every hopeless situation seems to exist. See, he's the God of right now. Some people, they come to church, they want something from God, but they never move. And then they leave here wondering why God didn't do anything. God's already done it all. You got to do something tonight. Amen. I was going to preach about miracles tonight. In Matthew 13 and Peter, Jesus had been praying and fed the 5,000. 5,000 men. That wouldn't count counting the women and men and here he comes strolling up on the water see the God I serve gravity has no control of him you see all the pictures of Peter sinking but it never shows him walking on the water the Bible says that he walked on the water but see he got his eyes on his problems maybe on your sickness Maybe on your situation instead of worshiping Jesus. If you're sick tonight, I'm going to tell you the remedy. You need to step out with your hands up, your voice lifted up, and begin to walk this place praising and worshiping God. You're not worried about the pain in your body. When you begin to worship and praise Him, the pain will leave the name of Jesus I said there's a miracle in this house tonight when you're in the middle of a crisis Jesus will show up he knows how to walk in just at the right time demonic that showed up and worshiped Jesus and when he got through with him he had his clothes on and he was in his right mind every spirit of fear has got to go tonight in the name of Jesus peace is being spoken tonight when the Hebrew children were in the fire that fire was hot I read somebody wrote today that they believe that there was cool spots in the furnace. Idiots. They don't know my God. It was so hot that it killed the men putting them in there. Their hair didn't smell like smoke. Their clothes didn't smell like smoke. Because somebody walked in there that looked like the... gonna hold my body down he'll walk right into the middle of your situation tonight and say peace be still if you need the Holy Ghost we're speaking in other tongues you raise your hands and you begin to praise God and the Holy Ghost will fall on you I said it's real it's real somebody's door tonight he wants to come in and sup with him amen I'm just to share one last thing with you Matthew wrote about feeding the 5,000 and then Jesus went in the mountain to pray and then he said to the disciples they were to go 
They were to leave Bethsaida and go to Genezareth. And we find that Matthew and Mark both wrote that when Jesus came to them, that they were in the midst of the sea. And what's so important about that preacher? I'm just about to tell you. One of the greatest miracles, I believe, besides getting the Holy Ghost, is the best miracle. That's recorded in the Bible nobody ever preaches about. Because John's version of the miracle is different than anybody else's version. Y'all want me to tell you what it is? Between these two locations that they were traveling, the Bible says it was 25 to 30 furlongs. There's 220 furlongs. 220 yards in a furlong. And there's 1,700 and something yards in a mile. So they were somewhere between three and four miles, which was close to about halfway, which would prove that Matthew and Mark were accurate in their description. Is somebody following me? So I want to read you John's version. It says, when they had rode about five 20 or 30 furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh to him. They were afraid. But he said to them, it is I, be not afraid. He's telling that to somebody right now. But they willingly received him in, into the ship. Now I want you to notice this last passage. And immediately, the ship was at land where they went. Y'all just thought Peter Pan could fly a ship. You didn't know Jesus could fly a ship, did you? Some of you are getting that. Captain Hook and Peter Pan ain't the first ones to fly the ship. Jesus got behind the kill. He said, well, that don't make sense. It does make sense because he's God. He didn't have two 250 twin turbo Mercury's on the back of that ship. But when Jesus stepped on the boat, immediately they were at shore. They covered four to five miles just like that. And I'll tell you that tonight that no matter your circumstances, no matter your situation, uh, when Jesus comes in, something can happen immediately. Come on, somebody. Something's about to break in here. I wish I could get everybody up on their feet and worshiping God if you're able. Come on. Somebody ought to run around this church. Somebody needs to let the Holy Ghost break in on them right now. If you got sickness in your body, begin to get out and worship the Lord. Come on. I want you to push a little bit in the Holy Ghost. Jesus wants to walk right into your life. He wants to set some things free right now. Immediately. Woo, hallelujah. Go ahead. I got to pray. Come on, somebody. You got to push through this blockage. Well, God don't want to heal me. That's a lie from the devil. God's been healing people. God's been filling people with the Holy Ghost. People have been baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. you got to step out of your pew tonight. Don't get in one place and do the running, man. My God, move up. Take up some area. Claim some new territory. Some of you are getting it. Some of you are not. It's time to pick up stake and move a little deeper in the Holy Ghost. Brother, brother Uncle Billy, raise your hand. Come up here, Brother Uncle Billy. He told me today he's never going to live that down. This man got the Holy Ghost. It was all over him. Come, come on up here, Uncle Billy. Is that okay? He's still smiling. Amen. Look at him. 
He gave you the thumbs up. Amen. He got his miracle. God's going to do some great things in his life. Why are you sitting back tonight? Why are you sitting back tonight? He didn't know he was going to help me preach. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody. in here. If you need something from God, come up here and let us pray for you. That's it. Come on, give us somebody. Pray with somebody right now. Come on, release your faith. Release your faith in the Holy Ghost. Release your faith in the Holy Ghost. Release your faith right now. Release your faith. I command in the name of Jesus to be loosed. Every sickness to go. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Pick your feet up. Come on, people are beginning to move. Come on, get out of your comfort zone. Move around, spin around, do something. Receive your 